question and I give the call to the Honourable Member for Indi. Good evening, Deputy Speaker, and thank you for this opportunity to address the Social Services Legislation Amendment Simplifying Student Payments Bill. There are three main points I would like to make in my speech tonight. First, my support for the bill and the process involving it. Second, to talk a little bit about Indi, my electorate, and some of the wonderful things that are happening there with young people. And third, I'd like to put the call out for a much stronger approach from recognition from this House to support young people, and particularly young people in rural and regional Australia. And clearly I've got some ideas that I'd like to share with the House about how we might do that. So I'm proud to support this legislation. Regional students must have access and support to go to university and higher education. And this bill goes some way in addressing this. As we've heard, the legislation will align means testing rules for student payments with other welfare payments, automatic issue of healthcare cards to recipients of student payments and remove the requirement for separate application, and the automatic update of the geographical classification which is used to assess eligibility for independent rates of youth allowance. I welcome these amendments and I'm really, really pleased that we've got this far. One of the reasons why we've got this far, and I'd like to take a minute to acknowledge the work of Senator Bridget McKenzie uh, from the other place. Uh, Senator Bridget McKenzie has taken a lead role in uh, understanding the problems we have with rural and regional Australia and going out to the community, doing the listening and then coming back with this legislation. So in 2015, Senator McKenzie hosted a series of regional higher education forums across the country. The forums were an opportunity to discuss the barriers to assessing higher education for regional and remote students um, and how to overcome them. And she's clearly listened and the results are in this legislation tonight. These changes are a win for young people and their families across regional Australia, but they're particularly of benefit to the people in my electorate. And I'd like to take the moment to share with the House some of the amazing things that are happening, by, happening with and by the young people in my electorate and to, to talk about why it's really important that we need legislation that looks at the problems young people are experiencing in their, in their ability to really participate in our society, for us to take the role that needs to, to be taken to, to get rid of those problems and barriers. And then, then we need to go the next step. But just to talk about some of the wonderful things that are happening in my electorate. Next week, as members of parliament probably know, is Youth Week. And local governments across North East Victoria are delivering the 2017 Youth Politics Camp. And this camp gives young people an opportunity to learn more about our political system, come to understand why politics is important and how it works, how young people can participate and how they can have their say and how they can build their networks and discuss issues with other people who care about politics. And I'd particularly like to acknowledge the work of local governments in my electorate, to Amanda Aldous from Benalla Rural City Council, to Tom Arnold from Wangaratta City Council, from Jenny Causa from the Alpine Shire Council, to Sel Kimber from Indigo, to Inga Hamilton from Strathbogie, to Jodie Bell from Mansfield, uh, to Rachel Harbgood and Anthony Nicholson from the city of Wodonga. So they've come together as local councils to run the youth politics camp. And in fact, it's in the first week of April and it's just going to be a most amazing experience and I'm really looking forward to being there. And these people as youth coordinators, they've engaged, they've mentored, they've supported and they really respect the young people of my electorate. So I want to say thank you team for that. Another activity that's just having an amazing impact are the leadership development programs that are happening in Indi. And one particular one in its ninth year is the Wodonga Youth Leadership Program. And it provides opportunities for young people who've got a desire to strengthen their inner leader. And the program allows young people to develop their skills in decision making, project management, conflict resolution and communication. And these people together with the uh, Red Carpet Award in Wodonga and the Eagle Award get recognition for the projects they undertake in our community to make it a stronger place. So the Wodonga Youth Leadership has been a great success and it's been identified by other go local governments across the state who want to use the program in their own area. 
And if I could just talk about one particular graduate in 2016, Liam Shea, who's currently working at Wodongatave, never thought he'd take on the responsibilities of a social worker until he participated in the program. And Liam describes the program as one that was challenging, exposed him to people and opportunities that he never would have experienced otherwise. And clearly, Liam and his friends are going to go from strength to strength in leadership. And I know that rural and regional communities like mine will thrive when organisations, groups and communities and people gain the skills and confidence to seek their own solutions, to make plans and take effective action to get results. And we will be even the better when we as adults include processes in our organisations that open our arms for young people and we say to them, we want you to come on board, we want you to be involved, we want to hear what you've got to say, but most of all we want to walk side by side with you in our communities. So one of the things that I do as a member of parliament to support young people in my electorate is every sitting week that we're sitting up here, young or people, community members from across my electorate are able to volunteer in my Canberra office. And they've become a really important part of the infrastructure of enabling me to represent my community. The volunteers understand local issues. They help me stay connected. They bring joy and fun into our office. And while this is not a specifically young person's program or a student program, this year I've had the pleasure in welcoming four young people as volunteers. And I'd show a call out to Billy Munro, Talia Biggs, Claudia Weatherall and, and Corey McKibben. And they've been joined by uh, Sean O'Neill, who's one of my permanent staff. Sean's studying at Canberra and works in my office two days a week, comes from Wangaratta. And Jamin Shea, coincidentally the brother of aforementioned um, Liam Shea. Jamin is in my office as part of the Australian National University Parliamentary Intern Program. And he, as part of his internship, is going to be looking at the engagement of young people in political processes, which is of fantastic use for me, for INDI, and of course as part of his degree. And I'd like to acknowledge these two young people in the uh, gallery tonight, to Claudia and to Jamin. Thanks for turning up. Um, but also I'd like to just talk a little bit more about these volunteers, because when they come and work in Canberra, you get to know them better. So Talia from Wodonga, she's now living in Melbourne, and she's a mentor and facilitator for young Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders from all around Victoria, and in some cases nationally. And she helps young people engage in areas of education, voting, health and wellbeing. Um, and I'm delighted to see on the front bench. I, I know that you took the opportunity to go and speak with them and inspire them and give them the courage. And I think when young people come to Canberra and they can meet other members of parliament and they can get to know us as individuals and they can see, well, I could be like that when I grow up. And I know, Linda, that's exactly what you've provided to her. Now, Billy is a young musician from Wodonga and Yakandanda, and he works as a structured workplace learning team member at the Northeast Local Learning and Employment Network. And he leads our young people in music industry projects. Corey from Yakandanda is now studying a double degree at Deakin University. He's studying a Bachelor of Law and a Bachelor of International Studies. And in 2014, Corey was part of the Wodonga Youth Leadership Program. Um, and he came and volunteered in my office. And he, he, he just loved being part of the hurly burly and the bustle. And I know he just spread the, um, the warmth and the love of Parliament which people so rarely see, I think, but back to his educational environment, back to his community of Yakandanda. And Claudia, who is with us tonight. Claudia is from Wodonga and is now living in Melbourne. And she's a graduate of the Bachelor of Arts, University of Melbourne. And following her completion of the Victorian Parliament, um, in their intern program, um, all this time this week when she's been up here, Claudia has been the uh, the person to guide and help the, the people from my community who are visiting, as happens in many members of parliament. But this week we've had the Alpine Valleys Leadership Program doing leadership development work, and Claudia has been able to sit in on their program for the two days, but also has provided great insight and help in our office. So thank you, Claudia. I really appreciate, appreciate having you here. But one of the, one of the things that makes what, what happens in Indi so important and what Bridget McKenzie and the minister have been able to do with this legislation is say we've got to go and listen to young people and we've got to get rid of the barriers that stop them from participating. So there are so many barriers and challenges that young people who live in rural and regional area face. 
So while, of course, it's really good that we've, we've begun with these problems around youth allowance and we've sorted some of the obvious inconsistencies out, there's so much more to do. One of the most critical periods for students is the transition period from December to March, when they leave school and work out what they're going to do with their next career. And there are many factors affecting students during that period. And many, many country kids take up the offer to uh, have a gap year. They've got to go and earn money. And so rather than going straight on to university, they spend their time, which is often really a good thing. I, I'm not against it. But what we've found is that the statistics of students after the gap year going on to study are really, really low. It's a matter of getting the money. Uh, it's a matter of getting yourself to university, leaving home and doing all the really hard yards that go with it. So what we've found is statistics of young people from rural and regional areas studying in university are ashamedly low. And as Senator Mackenzie has said, a postcode should not determine whether a young person can secure a university degree. But sadly for us, it does. We've got to do a whole lot more work on getting our young people into study. And the statistic I'm told, while only 10 per cent of Australians live in rural and remote area, areas, the evidence suggests that there are so much fewer of us who actually take it on. So something like um, regional stu students uh, make up only 18.8 per cent of domestic undergraduate students at university, compared with 26.4 per cent of the population. So that is really shameful and we've got to do so much work. So I'm not going to talk more about the problems because that's not what tonight's about. But what I really would like to do is talk about what we as a parliament can do. So I'm going to just focus on some of the work that I'd like to put out there. And one of the most important things I think we could do as a parliament is have a minister for youth affairs. Now, not a minister like we have a minister for age affairs or not a minister like we have one for health, but a really special colleague, one of us who is a networker, a facilitator, a community development person who can work within the government and with the opposition bipartisanly to make sure that all of our policies actually take account of young people. So the Youth Affairs Minister wouldn't be a job of doing youth. Their job would be to integrate so that every single piece of legislation that comes before the parliament has considered the impact on young people and, where appropriate, has, will be able to then go and work with, for example, local government in my electorate, with the leadership's programs in my electorate, and say, OK, we're doing this fantastic work now on um, uh, legislation that we passed yesterday around rural health, and we're looking at pathways to get more doctors into rural health. So the youth minister, their job would be to go and work with young people and help them understand where the jobs are and understand where the barriers are, and then they'd come back to parliament and work with the government to say, OK, here's the plan of how we need to do it, and then let's work together in a bipartisan way to really support the legislation that we passed yesterday on getting more doctors to the country. So how can we work with young people to make sure that they can get the training they need in the communities that they live in, if that's appropriate? and then not have to go to Melbourne and Sydney, which is often one of the disincentives. So next week, my colleague from Mayo um, and I are going to be moving a, a private member's motion on Monday in private member's business, where we'll be calling for the introduction of discussion around a young person's minister. And for my colleagues in the past um, parliament tonight, I really ask you to think about um, how we would do this, because young people are so special, and the way the wor they work is so different, the digital natives in particular, as how we work. So our solutions are not going to be their solutions. So we need a really clever, and I think I'm sure we can do it, way of working with young people, not only to do the scheme that I'm doing with volunteering, not only the internship program that's been offered now with, the, um, with Canberra University, but how we can get the ordinary community leaders, the kids in our schools and the kids that run our community groups so well, get them interested in parliament and how it works and get their voices heard in this place. So um, the member for mayor and I are hoping that we can start a discussion with um, our colleagues on both sides of parliament. Um, and then perhaps after the budget comes down, we can some, spend some more time in winter and in this spring session bringing up for next year a, a, um, a private member's bill, hopefully, that gets the support of both sides of parliament that, in, that gives us with a uh, young people's minister who will really help us do the work 
and, and give us that step up to take us with young people's involvement, this country really could reach its potential. And I know the Prime Minister is always asking us to be innovative. The way to do it is to get our young people into parliament. 